Good morning and welcome to our session for the English language. We are looking at spot the error. So we're specifically looking at um, understanding how to identify these errors, right? If I look at a sentence, how do I know that this sentence has an error pertaining to, for example, uh, the error type as parallelism or uh, how do I know that this um, uh, question has an error type pertaining to tangling modifier right so things like that so it's important for us to not just be aware of the possible errors but the objective being that we should be able to identify these errors quickly because of our awareness yeah? because we have knowledge on all these error types it should make our job easier in identifying the error as soon as we look at a sentence right so um, uh, in continuation with the last session where we looked at uh, you know the last nine error types uh, we're going to continue focusing on that because uh, one we did not have time to um, what can I say review as many questions that we wanted to uh, on those error types so we're going to we didn't have that uh, we didn't have time to review as many questions as we wanted to uh, you know in those error types so we're going to take a look at that let's see if you're able to identify those error types or not yeah so let me start uh, with the projecting the ppt and we'll get started okay so this is our first question monisha was to about tell her teacher the truth when her friend interrupted her okay so this is the question you can obviously identify which part you think has the error pretty simple as soon as we read it we know that uh, you know there's something funny or awkward in part a right manisha was to about that doesn't make sense there right in just terms of ordering of these words in the sentence so all i have to do is the error is in part a uh, and not part b actually if you if i if i interchange manisha was uh, manisha was about to do something what is that to tell her teacher right so all i have to do is just interchange this this right so about comes before two and not the other way around so munisha was about and if the the sentence construction is like that some someone was about to do something and in our context it is she wanted to tell her teacher the truth when her friend interrupted her at that time right so this is an error pertaining to word order nothing is wrong with part b was about to tell her teacher right so here tell brings in the meaning of she wants to inform her teacher uh, you know what i know the truth let me tell you what it is it's always tell the truth no even even the uh, phrase uh, sometimes you will hear people say say the truth which is incorrect right tell the truth you tell lies you tell the truth you don't say lies you don't say the truth incorrect word choice say and tell difference between say and tell keep that in mind that's another you could even get an error around that right in terms of vocabulary the right word choice let's move on let's look at our next question i guess they figured the land worth wasn't as much as they thought i guess they figured the land worth wasn't as much as they thought where do you think the error is i, I guess you're struggling to figure out the answer here actually the i guess they figured what is the context meaning the context meaning is they thought that the land uh, the price of the land right was worth this much but it actually wasn't the reality is it was completely contradicting what they believed it to be right that's the context meaning i guess they figure the land wasn't again it's a word order error right the error is in part b the land subject and then the auxiliary word helping word right we know this is a b form is are was where right and, and we're looking at the negative form of was which is was not that is contracted no wasn't right so i guess they figured the land subject wasn't worth as much as they so all you have to do is again rearrange the word order errors pertaining to word order yeah let's look at the next one because the man doesn't make a priority his wife she often uh, feels neglected and alone this one should be an easy one as you read it uh, you should be able to figure out uh, you know where the error is uh, have are you able to okay so you are saying b again for this one and that would be correct right because if you look at it 
priority after preposition will come there is see in part b actually there is no preposition no if you look at it i have make which is the verb a priority which is a noun phrase right uh, the indefinite article talking about the priority which is a noun and his wife as in the man's wife possession possessive pronoun his is a possessive pronoun wife is the object right so in this yes you are right when you say the error is in part b no doubt but again this is an error pertaining to word order make who a priority make his wife a priority all you are doing is interchanging this again okay so because the man doesn't make his wife a priority she often feels neglected and alone again this is an error pertaining to word order so do you understand in a sentence when it comes to word order construction is very very important right you have the subject right you have the action see even in this construction if you look at it the man he is the subject doesn't make right this is the helping verb remember helping verbs are not only be forms which we looked at earlier it is also do and have right which is did does had has hai na so if i'm if i'm if i'm saying obviously here it is a negative form does plus not doesn't so this is a helping verb right doesn't make is a main verb so i have the subject i have the a uh, helping verb then i have the main verb sometimes there may not be a helping verb hai na right then what object 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 is his wife a priority is just a in this context a priority is what the man doesn't make his wife a priority in fact his wife a priority is again more of a complement you know completing the meaning of the context right the man doesn't make his wife what a priority again priority uh, again would be an object right his wife becomes the indirect object a priority becomes the direct object uh, the man doesn't make what a priority whom his wife got it so his wife is in fact the indirect object answering the question whom and answering the question what is the direct object are you following so in terms of a sentence construction this is a basic sentence construction subject helping verb main verb there can be an indirect object need not necessarily always be the case but the construction is this i have a subject i have a verb i have an object right everything else is i can add stuff like a uh, helping verb here right Uh, i can add an indirect object here before the direct object i can have a complement at the end some more you know extra information just to complete the meaning of the sentence it can be a prepositional phrase whatever right so it, as long as i am familiar with my basic form of a sentence construction it will be easy for me to identify errors pertaining to word order that's what i wanted to uh, highlight okay so all these three uh, things that we've looked at is pertaining to um word order errors okay see even here the land subject wasn't is my helping verb okay let's move on to our next question type it was so lovely weather that we spent the whole day in the garden so where do you think the error is in this one it was so lovely weather that we spent the whole day in the garden according to you which part do you think has the error okay so just to highlight let's look at part a okay it was so lovely weather i know in this phrase weather is my noun now just because lovely ends with ly doesn't mean it's an adverb it's actually a adjective describing the weather what sort of a weather lovely weather so here lovely is an adjective so let's so let's see where the error is so ideally in this context so is an incorrect uh, word to emphasize that right here so is acting as an intensifier what is an intensifier something that emphasizes it is added for emphasis right so if i say i can say let's say you're having tea 
right you go to somebody's house they offer you tea and then you you can say this tea is good but if you want to emphasize you can say the tea is so good right so i know so is used as an intensifier to bring in the meaning of emphasis but here in our context so is not the right intensifier to bring an emphasis of the lovely weather what is the word that i have to replace so with such such is would be the it was such lovely weather so why should i replace so with such because such is used to emphasize the adjective in a noun phrase so basically this is a noun phrase which one lovely weather where weather is my noun and lovely is my adjective describing the noun so in this noun phrase the right intensifier would be such and not so right let's look at another example so i can say he he is such a nice man right so this is the noun phrase i have the indefinite article i have nice which is the adjective and i have man which is the noun so this is a noun phrase right so before a noun phrase if you want to bring in emphasis the right intensifier would be such and not so we don't say he is so a nice man incorrect he is such a nice man correct likewise it was such lovely weather not so lovely weather are you following but at the same time you also need to understand uh, this is when we are talking about a noun phrase okay but of course you can use so to emphasize an adjective like you can say uh for example i've been so busy right so in this context there's no noun phrase as such i'm just adding so to emphasize this busyness which is the adjective right describing something that i am i've been so busy or uh these games are so boring so boring is my adjective describing the games i'm still using so here to intensify it's like saying it's so cold the weather is cold right cold is an adjective describing the weather so i can say it's so cold or i'm feeling so cold right so i can still use so to bring in emphasis of only adjective but if it's a noun phrase right i have a noun i can have an adjective and usually a noun phrase starts with an article right a definite or an indefinite article um and then i use such that's a slight difference i want you to remember this yeah so the only difference between so and such is you i can use so to bring an emphasis and put it before an adjective like these examples that we just saw it's be i've been so busy and these games are so boring however when there is a noun phrase in front of a noun don't use so but use such right so i can say i feel so cold but the same thing it's such a cold day are you following the difference do you see the difference i feel so cold cold is the adjective i have put so bringing an emphasis of the adjective but in the next sentence i'm saying it's such a cold day why because a cold day is a noun phrase hai na indefinite article adjective day now are you following right just to just to clarify this let's quickly i'm going to put on additional uh, example sentences um but i want you to understand the context difference between so and such very very important you will have errors pertaining to this these are nothing but intensifiers which bring in emphasis we we'll look at some more example sentences so i can say she was so nice she was such a nice girl the children seem so happy she seemed such a happy woman i hope you are following the difference so nice adjective such a nice girl noun phrase so happy adjective such a happy woman noun phrase okay and that's why our error is in part a
we replace so with such. Yeah, I hope this is clear. So any errors pertaining to intensifiers to do with so and such, you should be able to quickly spot. Let's look at the next one. This can be so a gradual process that you are not aware of it happening. This should be an easy one since we have spent so much time understanding the basic difference between so and such. Where is the error? So it says this can be so a gradual process that you are not aware of it happening. But if you look closely, right, we've spent so much considerable time understanding this whole difference between so and such. So the first error that you will identify is obviously in part A, na, a gradual process, which is my noun phrase. And we just said that so will not come before a noun phrase. It will only be such. Yeah, because I have my definite article, I have my adjective gradual and I have my noun process. Hey na? Yeah, so this is my noun phrase. So error is in part A and not C. Change so to such. Not aware of it happening is absolutely fine. No problem. I'm, I'm, I'm not aware that something is happening in the cafeteria right now. Correct sentence, no? There's nothing wrong with happening. Which means it's just talking about something that is happening currently, ongoing. The action is continuous right now. Hey na? Yeah? So, let's look at the next one. Such candidates who have not cleared the written test will not be called for the interview. So, in this question, if you notice, right, we are talking about we are specifically addressing a particular group of candidates who have not cleared the written test and some action is going to be taken. Obviously, you know, if you don't clear the, uh, the written test, you will not be called for the interview. But I don't need such, right, because we are not emphasizing here, we are distinguishing, we are determining, right. So the right determiner, so this is an incorrect intensifier here. I need to replace such with those. Right? It's an incorrect uh, intensifier here. I need those instead of such because we are, the meaning is I am distinguishing or determining the candidates. Distinguishing the candidates who have not cleared, not cleared the test. Right? And what action is going to be taken for those candidates? So, replace such with those. The error is in part A. So we need to also be able to identify when an intensifier is used incorrectly in a context, right? What is the context? Am I, is the context meaning emphasizing something or is the context determining or distinguishing something? Accordingly, I have to use the right determiner or right word. Yeah. So far good. Let's move on. The present day industrial trend is in the direction of automation and less people. The present day industrial trend is in the direction of automation and less people. Where do you think the error is? So you're saying in present days. Let's look at the context. Yeah, the context is very clearly saying what the present day trend is, right? So as far as construction goes, it's, there's absolutely nothing wrong in it. I don't have to say in present days, the industrial trend is in the direction of not required. The present day industrial trend, which means what is currently happening right now, it brings in the same meaning. So I didn't, I don't need to change that there, right? The present day uh, situation or the present day crisis or the present day issue, right? You have sentences starting like that, which is focusing on what exactly is happening right now uh, in these times. That's the meaning it's bringing in, right? So you don't have to change that. So the present day industrial trend is in the direction of automation and my error in fact is in part D. Why so? Because I have people here, right? When will I use less when I'm referring to something as a bulk or a mass? But when I'm, when I'm talking about persons and things that can be counted like people, right? I will use fewer, not less. Okay, so the error is in part D. I, we need to replace less with fewer. What errors are these? These are errors pertaining to quantifiers, right? Something that quantifies like a number, 
right and in this context we are talking about people here. So the present day industrial trend is in the direction of automation and fewer people not less people. We will look at some more example sentences pertaining to errors that revolve around quantifier as an error type. Let's look at this one. Though you may not agree with the philosophy of Rajneesh, you must admit that he had tremendous influence over a great much followers. Where do you think the error is? So are you able to identify? Let's look at the context. Though you may not agree with the philosophy of Rajneesh, you must admit that he had tremendous influence over a great again. We are looking at followers, right? Which means they are countable. And you don't use much, you use many. A great many is in fact a collocation, right? This phrase we've heard people say that. The error is in part D where you change much to many, right? Because countable, how much money do you have? We don't say how many money do you have right but we do say how many rupees do you have why because i can count rupees right people always get confused money is uncountable rupees is countable Hena. yeah so whenever there is a quantifying uh, where i can count right many fewer and less than much is used for bulk how much salt did you put Right? Salt is uncountable. I don't say how many salt did you put. Incorrect. How much salt did you put in this uh, dish? In this menu? Are you following? Yeah? Much many difference. So here we need many and not much. Again, this is, is this an error pertaining to quantifier. Right? Let's look at the next one. Because of the recent strike in the mills, less men will be recruited in the coming season. This should be easy. Now that we have, you know, just gone ahead and understood the difference between fewer, less, much, many. Where do you think the error is in this one? Yes. So basically, we you change less to fewer, right? Fewer men. Why? Because we are talking about number. Anything that denotes number, you will use fewer. Yeah? Fewer men will be recruited yeah so remember this less will always denote amount or degree fewer will always denote number anything that can be counted good let's look at this they had to face many trouble during their journey to west bengal they had to face many trouble during their journey to west bengal where do you think the error is you say b why so well, you would be correct. The error is in part B. But what do we need to change? Here, trouble here is uncountable. Right? It's kind of tricky because trouble can be countable as well as uncountable. You know, you can have more than one trouble. Troubles. Right? Plural noun number. In that case, it becomes countable. But in the context and generally, trouble is an uncountable noun. So, I, know, I can't use many, no? For uncountable, I have to use much. So, I need to replace many with much. Yeah. So, it's a tricky word, this trouble. Depending on the context meaning, it can either take up a countable or an uncountable meaning. Are you following? But generally, note that trouble is uncountable. Right. For example, I can say, I have had nothing but trouble. Right. In this context, it's uncountable but the same trouble i can also use it uh, i mean it can also give the meaning of countable for example i can say the troubles only seemed to get worse yeah the troubles only seem to get worse more than one trouble so here it you know it it comes across as a countable noun i can count the number of troubles that this person uh, went through are you following? Even if I say the trouble only seemed to get worse, it will still be, it can still be counted as uncountable. So it takes up both that meaning. Yeah. The trouble only seemed to get worse. 
countable as well as uncountable just to give you an idea but either ways depending on the context you have to figure out if you know usually as a general standard you can go with trouble being uncountable and use the correct quantifier before that so in this context they had to face much trouble during their journey to west bengal let's look at the next one many people in bangladesh don't scarcely know about the hardships that the chakma refugees are experiencing where is the error so having looked at this context many people in bangladesh don't scarcely know about the hardships that the chakma refugees are experiencing so as soon as you look at this right uh, if you are paying attention you know that the error is in part b why so i'm saying the error is in part b can you can you spot why part b something is wrong because scarcely itself means what hardly right many people in bangladesh scarcely know about the hardships barely right that's the meaning that scarcely brings in right which is already negative in meaning so which means what is not required there don't right double negative something that we need to avoid right so because scarcely itself brings in you know a negative meaning which is you know talking about almost not or hardly or barely or only just right so many people in bangladesh i don't the, need this don't we have to omit don't now these kind of errors you know i would say it 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 kind of uh, wavers between superfluous and double negatives right i don't need this don't here because already scarcely is bringing in the meaning of uh, bringing in that negative meaning so many people in bangladesh scarcely know about the hardships that the chakma refugees are experiencing not don't scarcely double negatives yeah we will categorize you know them in under double negatives because it's very very obvious both are giving me negative meaning i don't need that let's see if you are able to identify the next one he hesitated to accept the past as he did not think the salary would not be enough for a man with a family of 10 have you been able to identify which part has the error here let's look at it he hesitated to accept the past as he did not think the salary would not be enough for a man with a family of 10 are you are you able to understand the context there is just too many negative meanings unnecessarily right because it already says in part b he did not think the salary again why do i need this not here in part c doesn't make sense no if i delete that then the meaning is correct he hesitated to accept the past why as he did not think the salary would be enough not would not be enough because here already i have did not think are you following so the error is in part c so these can be a little confusing if you're not paying attention you need to delete not why because i already have that meaning coming in in part b he did not think the salary would be enough for a man with a family of 10 that makes sense yeah so these are all errors pertaining to double negatives bringing in you know i already have a negative meaning coming in in a in a part and then i again have an unnecessary word that I, so which means you need to look out for this this not right in a context and see if there's already a negative meaning coming in the sentence let's do one more she denied that she did not commit the crime she denied that she did not commit the crime where do you think the error is easy one part b hai na again i don't need not after did because denied itself means what that she is not accepting that she did the crime hai na so because denied is saying not accepting that she did the did commit the crime right denied is a negative word yeah no problem it's already bringing in negative meaning so which means i don't need this not again in part b so the error is in part b where i need to delete not following so these are all errors pertaining to double negatives yeah let's move on you work in a bank didn't you as soon as i see this i know it's the concept is question tags i just need to make sure that the with all the knowledge that i have on question tags i need to make sure there are some basic rules right when it comes to question tags i mean if the 
if the if the statement is positive then the tag has to be negative if the statement is negative the tag has to be positive this is the basic rule of cornerstone rule of question tags but there are other rules as well we will look at it but for this one let's see if we are able to identify it. you work in a bank so that's a positive statement so you are saying do you but remember you work in a bank is a positive statement na yes which means the tag has to be negative which is this yes exactly right i need don't you not didn't you because why it's not in past tense the sentence is in present tense you need to keep that also in mind so didn't you you worked if if it was ed here then didn't you will make sense but it's not in ed right it's simple present tense so don't you yeah you work in a bank don't you you work in a bank don't you got it so basically if the main this is the cornerstone rule right if the main part of the sentence is positive the question tag is negative if the main part of the sentence is negative the question tag is positive let's look at uh, you know that one of those constructions as well so if i have you don't recognize me can you complete this for me what will you put here you don't recognize me can you complete the tag for me yes do you that's it right there you go so we've covered the cornerstone rule which is what let's put it down here main part of the sentence is positive i need negative question tag right main part of the sentence is negative i need positive question tag right perfect we know this this should register this is the basic rule let's go to the next one they've gone away for a few days haven't them they've gone away for a few days haven't them have you been able to identify where the error is haven't they yes absolutely right the error is in part d another thing that we ha constantly have to keep in mind is whatever the subject is the same thing only has to repeat in the tag as well right so it will be haven't they and not haven't them correct let's move on they couldn't hear me did they they couldn't hear me did they they couldn't hear me did they yes absolutely the error is in part c why because we need to change uh, we need to use the you know if there is a modal verb the the rule is if there is a modal verb in the main part of the sentence the question tag also will use the same modal verb yeah so it will be they couldn't hear me could they exactly keeping in mind the because the main statement is negative the tag is positive let's look at one more i'm the fastest am i not i'm the fastest am i not yes absolutely the error is in part b and why so because we know that with sentences that start with i am right in question tags let's be specific in question tags sentences that start with i am the tag is aren't i yeah so i'm honest aren't i i'm pretty aren't i right let's look at the last one she eats meat isn't she she eats meat isn't she yes absolutely the error is in part b right because why are we using uh, doesn't here because there is no auxiliary verb no in the main uh, part of the sentence so let's put down the rule if the main part of the sentence doesn't have an auxiliary verb the question tag uses an appropriate form of do whether did or does accordingly and in our context it is she eats meat does she not becomes doesn't she like you have rightly pointed out yeah so this shows that uh, you very very thorough with your 
question tag concepts at least which is good right so any errors pertaining to question tags uh, you know you should be able to identify them quickly let's move on to our next question uh, error type she wore a dress to the party that was far more attractive than the other girls she wore a dress to the party that was far more attractive than the other girls where do you think the error is more most but where is okay but um, there is no need for the superlative form most here right because if you look at the context uh, there is comparison happening between her dress and the dress of the other girls it's a comparative degree that is needed and more is rightly so it it brings in that meaning right more attractive but where the error is is in part d and what is that error to bring in more clarity like we said the comparison is between the dress that was attractive so the comparison is between her dress and the dress of those other girls not her dress and the other girls if you look at part d it says then the other girls which is incorrect no we are not comparing the dress to the girls we are comparing the dress to the dress of the other girls so i need to bring in or add something in part d to bring in that clarity so she wore a dress to the party that was far more attractive than those of the other girls where those brings in clarity saying hey we are comparing the dresses and not the girls are you following so this is an error pertaining to dangling modifier what's a dangling modifier where you know i don't i have a i have i have a word missing in the context and whatever it is that i'm trying to compare right is uh, is not complete as in is in there's incorrect comparison happening so in the context if you see actually the context is bringing the meaning as though they are comparing her dress to the other girls incorrect they are comparing her dress to the dresses of the other girls yeah and that uh, when we add that those in in part d then we understand the meaning right so this uh, she wore a dress to the party that was far more attractive than those of the other girls got it let's look at a couple of more with this particular error type which is dangling modifier a lot of them overlook this first of all they're not aware that there can be an error like this now that you are aware you need to just look out for this error the standard of living in india is still lower than most of the other developed countries same concept let me see if you are able to identify the error and if you have identified the error what will you add to complete meaning okay let's attack this question the standard of here again what is compared the standard is what is compared right we are not comparing uh, the standard of living in india to the other developed countries we are comparing the standard of living in india to the standard of living in the other countries which means again the error is in part c then that of most of the other developed countries right so that brings in that we are comparing the standard of living in india to the standard of living in the developed countries standard of living is what is compared are you following so the standard of living in india is still lower than that of the standard of living of most of the other developed countries there we go error is in part c let's look at a couple of more till you get the hang of this have you read in the hindustan times that kapil dev's shoulder was broken while playing the final test against pakistan where do you think the error is okay so let's look at this question have you read in the hindustan times that kapil dev's shoulder was broken while playing who was playing he was playing right otherwise it looks like the shoulder was playing the final test against pakistan so where is the error the error is in part c where what i need to do is i need to add shoulder was broken while he was playing bringing in the impression that kapil was the one who was playing and not his shoulder yeah very very uh, easy to overlook this sort of an error so we need to be very careful kya yeah? are you following 
there you go otherwise it gives the impression that shoulder was playing let's look at a couple of more a recent poll has indicated that Bini is considered brighter than any student in the class a recent poll has indicated that Bini is considered brighter than any student in the class where is the error okay so when you look at this context a recent poll has indicated that Bini is considered brighter than any other student right so the error is in part C where I add any other student the comparison is happening with Bini to other students so that clarity has to come in in part C so all these sort of errors that we've looked at so far are errors pertaining to dangling modifiers what is a dangling modifier if you are not familiar with that go check out the video in under basic grammar for reference it's available basically where I'm saying is something that has to be modified right there is a word missing so that's why that part or that uh, sentence is incomplete without that word right if you looked at all the four examples that we looked at we had to add one word to bring in clarity to complete meaning otherwise it was misleading it was giving us some other information right some other meaning let's look at our next error type yesterday i suddenly came across my friends yesterday i suddenly came across my friends where is the error or is there any error at all so you're saying c but why Yesterday, I suddenly came across my friends. See, to come across your friends, matlab, come across is the phrasal verb which brings in the meaning of, you know, I bumped into them. Right? So, in that context, already come across it itself means by chance, accident, by ac it was not a planned event. Right? I just happened to bump into my friends. That's the meaning that the context is giving. So, why do I need that suddenly in part B? Right? That is an unnecessary word there. Error is in part B where I delete suddenly because come came across itself means by chance, accidentally. That is a phrasal verb, right? To come across somebody means by chance you happen to meet them, which obviously happens suddenly only, right? It's not a planned event. Not in front of my friends. See, that is why it is important for you to pay attention to that phrasal verb. To come across someone or something means by chance it happened. It wasn't a planned thing. Right? It was accidentally when I was cleaning my cupboard. You know, I came across, uh, you know, an old photo of mine. Yeah? Are you following? Let's look at a couple of more contexts. So, this is... An error pertaining to what? Superfluous meaning. I don't need that word there in that context suddenly. It's an unnecessary word. It's bringing in the same meaning. So superfluous, out. I don't need this suddenly. I am a man of good principles and my first principle is flexibility. So if you look at this context, right? When I say principles itself means what? In, in this context, what is the meaning of principles? Which is talking about a moral rule or standard of good behavior right it's understood like you would have heard the phrase a man of principles which itself means what a man of moral standard good standard good behavior which means what is redundant in meaning what is superfluous in meaning what is not necessary good in part B the error is in part B because when, when you say a man of principles itself means somebody who has a standard of good behavior. Somebody who has a moral rule of good behavior, right? So, which means I don't need that word good which is very redundant in meaning, repetitive in meaning, superfluous in nature. Again, uh, an error pertaining to superfluous meaning. I am a man of principles, not I am a man of good principles. Let's look at one more. To claim that there is no other alternative to Narendra Modi is to open the door to one person rule. To claim that there is no other alternative to Narendra Modi is to open the door to one person rule. Where is the error? D. What is wrong with D? The door to one person rule. 
What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong in part D, in fact. Right? Open is to open the door to one person rule, which is absolutely fine. But the error is in part B. Why so? Because of the word alternative, right? Alternative means what? Another thing, right? So why, why do I need this other again, which is again superfluous in meaning? It gives me the same meaning. To claim that there is no alternative itself means, alternative means another way, right? The alternative is for us to, um, you know, use the train if the buses are on strike. Which means the other way, the other transportation, mode of transportation that you can turn to. Right? So again, the error is in part B. We need to delete other, right? Which brings in the same meaning as alternative. Alternative being a clue word. Following? Right? We, we So, just so that people understand. Alternative means another possibility <coughs> or choice. Yeah? Got it? So, I don't need other there. That is, so this is again superfluous. Superfluous meaning. Yeah? Okay. So, uh, that brings us to the end of the session. Uh, I think we've covered all our 23 odd error types. Right? Today, we focused on, um, you know, the last 8 or 9 error types. And we've closed uh, spot the error uh, topic question type. As such yeah so now what you need to do is all of this are going to be updated in the video library right so you can always go back and refresh your uh, you know basic rules of uh, what do I need to focus on right and all of this is pertaining to uh, most of it is pertaining to basic grammar but there are other uh, errors that you can learn like superfluous in nature or um, you know phrases and collocations Right, all these other stuff is also available. So the objective is for us to be familiar with all these error types so that we know what to look for in the exam when a sentence is there for spot the error, right? And the patterns differ. Nowadays, if you see, uh, instead of one sentence in a question, there are five sentences, and one part is highlighted, and they say, hey, the highlighted part is where the error is. But apart from that, there are two other parts which also have an error. Identify that error. And there are five sentences given instead of one sentence. And we have pairs. A, B, C, D, A, C, B, D. Choose the part, parts that have an error apart from the one that is highlighted. So there are different patterns when it comes to spot the error. Irrespective of what the pattern is or the complexity or the difficulty level of the question, we need to understand that the concept is still all these basic concepts. So, if I am familiar with all these basic concepts, how many of sentences are there, I should still be able to identify what the error is and where which part has the error. Are you following? So, uh, it does not matter the complexity or the pattern. The difficulty is only in the pattern, if you ask me. But the, the type of error that you identify will revolve around predominantly all these 23 error types that we've seen, right? And of course, um, uh, there are other miscellaneous ones as well. I'm thinking of adding some more uh, under the miscellaneous category where, you know, it doesn't necessarily, I can't categorize them under these 23, but there are those errors as well. Yeah. So, uh, my recommendation or suggestion would be that you go back, practice, first go through all of this, understand the concepts, you know, get very familiar. If, if there is a, like dangling modifier can be a completely new error type. You have no idea about that error type. Now you know what a dangling modifier is. So go and practice more so that any error pertaining to dangling modifier, you should be able to identify immediately without wasting time. Yeah. So hope all these sessions pertaining to spot the error have cleared a lot of your doubts, confusions that you might have around grammar. If you still continue to face any issues with respect to spot the error, please post the questions in the discussion forum. We will discuss it there, right? We can brainstorm there uh, and we can learn together to make sure that we absolutely uh, crack this question type and, you know, knowledge is uh, wealth, knowledge is power, right? The more you know, 
the more easier and confident you are to approach a particular question type. So, spot the error should no longer be a challenge. Yeah, that's my wish. And I wish that for you guys. <laughs> okay. And all the very best uh, to you. Yeah, take care.